thank you guys for attending this session. I'm very excited to be here. Thank you very much for Stu Kent for allowing me to speak. Um, I think this session might be hopefully a little bit different of a flavor on the, the whole strategy side with regard to how we're managing our students, which I'll get into in a second. So um, strategy execution and manning, managing today's marketing students. This is me, as you can see, I'm, I feel like I'm a pretty big deal. Uh, so I came into higher education from industry. So let me ask you guys, one, how many, how many full-time professors we have here? I mean, I'm assuming all of you guys are. Now, were all of you advisors as well? No, or is that, how many are advisors? Okay, and how many of you came from industry before you started teaching? Okay, okay, that's great. Um, so I have a business called Strategic Glue. Strategy is, is, is generally what I do. I work with small to medium-sized companies. Um, but kind of the, the interesting part for me, at least starting you know, as an adjunct and then becoming a full-time professor, then I went back to being an adjunct. So I look at everything much more probably from an industry lens than an education lens, even though I have to tell you guys, I love being around educators. You guys are my people. And I always tell, I tell my wife, I'm like, I'm in the wrong industry, you know, when I come to these things, because it's just intoxicating for me to be around people that are so passionate about what they do. But so I do a lot of fractional CMO work, um, you know, consulting, and then in some, some cases, general marketing services. But what I see, you know, continually is the challenges that our students are facing in getting jobs, and once they get into the jobs, what they're doing to, to progress in their career. So that's kind of where I want to talk, talk about. Um, so, oh, I guess I didn't, I skipped a little bit of that. So I have a master's in international business. Um, I guess I really don't need to say that much about that. I, I teach in the School of Business and the School of Communications at a school called Webster University in St. Louis. Um, as I said, I was a full-timer for five years, and then I went back to being an adjunct. Stu Kent was nice enough or crazy enough to let me author two, two textbooks, um, Brand Management and Marketing Management. And then in October of 2023, I actually wrote a small business marketing book. So most of my life is spent with small to mid-sized companies, helping them with marketing strategy, et cetera. Um, so let me ask you this question. 80% of the job is just showing up. Do you agree with this? Yay, nay? Okay, okay, not, n nobody agrees with this. What percentage of the job is just showing up? 10, 50, 50%? Okay, in general, let, let's just generalize. Oh, this is, this is a tough crowd. Okay, all right, all right, all right. Just keep that in the back of your mind because I'm gonna come back to this question. No. <laughs> no. So I'll come back to this question, but it, it, it's, it's usually a controversial question. So that's part of why I post it, but we'll talk about it in a second. So what I want to talk to you guys about is the importance of, you know, helping students manage their careers before they actually begin them. And then secondly, from the perspective of somebody who's worked in, you know, industry their whole lives as, you know, I've had businesses, I've worked for companies, I've been an executive, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. What employers really want from candidates now, and, you know, we, we focus so much on what we're teaching them, which obviously is important, the hard skills, the things that we need to know, but what about all the things that they don't know that they don't even need or that they don't know that they need to know? So if that makes sense. So simplified marketing overview. This is what I talk to business owners about all day, every day. Strategy, execution, and management. You basically need all three. And then when you dive into those, there's a whole lot of, of things that emanate from that. But the idea, you know, from a marketing standpoint is we, we talk about strategy. What do we want to do? You know, well, first of all, we talk about goals and objectives just from a high level then what's the strategy? What are we going to do or not do to achieve something? Then we do execution, social media, advertising, you know, SEO, all of that stuff. And then there's the management side. 
So you can be doing all those efforts, but you also have to be managing it. You know, are you doing research? Are you getting results and data? Are you analyzing things so that you can shift what you're doing or not doing to get the results that you want? And I find that the same thing is applied to the students. So generally, somebody's gonna to go to college because, well, they may feel like they have to go to college. But the idea is, okay, I'm gonna be successful, so I'm gonna to go to college. And I'm gonna get a good job after that. Maybe I'll, I'll have a family or I'll have, find a significant other, I'll get a house, you know, all of those things. So they make the decision to get the degree. That's where we come in. We help them if they become a, a marketing major or a business major. They take the courses, they attend the classes, they do the papers, they do the plans, they do all of these things. And then hopefully we've given them some insights as to what to expect when they get out there. And I don't know about you guys, but in my experience, they are shell-shocked before they get to that place. But even, you know, I, I keep in contact with so many students, as I'm sure you do, and what they have found once they get to the jobs is just perplexing to me because they seem pretty lost or it wasn't what they expected or their boss is a jerk or, you know, they don't know how to handle themselves in meetings, you know, et cetera. And so what I feel like we can do as educators is to help them really kind of manage their expectations about what they're going to encounter. But once they get there, how to conduct themselves and how to do things that they may not know how to do. I was talking, wow, it's amazing how dry your mouth gets when you're speaking. It's like you're, you're an instant camel. I was talking to Sandra about this yesterday or today. You know, a lot of our students at Webster University are first time college attendees. So, you know, they're coming from families that probably don't necessarily have a lot of, you know, insight as to how to guide them as it turns, you know, to getting these kinds of, of jobs. And so, um, you know, what I have continually seen is, 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 I'm sure you have, you know, everything changes, everything continually changes. The markets change, the technology changes, people have to change, and so, you know, embracing that is, is, is obviously a very good thing that we need to help our students with. But, you know, AI and uh, ChatGPT, this is a great example. So things are changing so fast that many people are really freaking out about this. Is it going to take our jobs? If I'm a copywriter, what do I need to be a copywriter for? Because AI is gonna do it for me. And I personally am thrilled about this because from a small business standpoint, how we help our clients, this is gonna help immensely. But it's how you use it. It's how you view the technology. You know, is it your friend or is it your foe? And so our students, you know, and again, I've had many that are already um, really apprehensive about this, that they feel like, man, what did I go to college for? Or, you know, blah, 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 and it's like, no, you know, you need to allay that fear that this is going to be something that's gonna help everybody. Um, but the other thing about change, and this is sort of a, a side funny story, you know, because I'm gonna go into soft skills and some things that are not really about all the hard skills that we teach them. So that's really kind of the basis of this presentation, and I'll get there in just a second. So in 2006, I was graduating with a master's in international business. I did my thesis on Empathy is a framework for driving customer service, brand differentiation, and company value in foreign and emerging markets. I tried to find a longer title, I couldn't do it. <laughs> but what's interesting, the point I wanna make about this is the, the program director, we had to submit what our thesis was gonna be on. And so, you know, I submitted it and he's like, you can't do it on this. This, is, this isn't about hard skills, this is soft skills. And he was very adamant about it, I'm like, well, unless you tell me I'm gonna fail the program, I'm gonna do it on this. Because I've always felt like the soft skills are really important um, and how much that's changed. So now in, you know, um, Dr. Eaton was talking about empathy and you know, all of these things. It's all over LinkedIn or in the literature that the soft skills are really important. And you know, I know that we've talked that, uh, you know, as an industry, how we can do more of that with our students, but, the point here is that things shift 
all of a sudden where soft skills were never talked about, now that's all that's talked about. Um, and so what I wanna do is talk to you from an employer's perspective about the things that I think, and I've talked to many, many employers about what they really want, where students are possibly showing up, not having these things that are making a difference in not only getting their jobs, but once they get in, how are they managing their career so that they can navigate and, and be more successful? So kind of a top 10 list, motivation. You know, and, and again, I'm not, you guys are educators. I'm not trying to tell you how to teach. I'm just trying to give you tips of things that I know that have worked. And before I forget, if you email me or DM me on LinkedIn, I have a list of about 25 things that I have accrued over the, the course of my teaching career that I've shared with other instructors that they have found helpful. Um, so if you guys want that, I can certainly provide that to you. So motivation, you know, our students, how do I say this? How, how many of you have children of your own? Okay, fair amount. You know, I have a millennial and I have a Gen Z, and I did my best to not be a helicopter pilot, uh, parent, but I, I think our generations have sort of done that. And, you know, I hear time and again, oh, millennials are slackers or they're lazy, you know, or, or Gen Zs are, you know, too particular or whatever. I personally haven't found that to be true with my particular students. But we can't necessarily teach them motivation, but we can tell them, look, when you show up at the job, you need to show up. And how you show up is important. How you hold things, you know? That's things that, they, those are things that they may not have learned at home or they may not have learned in other jobs. So can we help them in the classroom? Can we help them with what we're teaching them in, in terms of assignments to not only show up in a, in a motivated way, but the way that they hold these things, the way that they show up in terms of their demeanor, their attitude, you know, those are things I think we can help guide them. Work ethic. I talk to so many business owners where they're just like, you know, a business owner doesn't want to see, you know, somebody check out at, at 458. They, they just don't. And, and, and so what can we do to help them understand that the work ethic, even though it's obvious and expected, it's not obvious or expected because a lot of the times people sort of feel like I got the job. Where's my paycheck? It's like, it's like a merit increase. Everybody expects a merit increase. It's sort of the trophy for just showing up. No, it's a merit increase. You should get an increase because you, it was, you, you earned it on merit. You don't just get it. And younger people, and I hate to use that because I'm pretty young myself. You guys laughed, You're, you weren't supposed to laugh at that. Um, you know, a lot of the, the, the younger folks don't necessarily get that. Um, being trustworthy and reliable, these are, you know, human things that we should just kind of have, right? But when you are that employee who shows up in a way that an employer says, you know, or a manager, look, I need you to, to kind of run with this, you kind of go figure it out, you want to be that person. Um, and I have a funny story about my son who was in his first big boy job and well, I'll, I'll get there in a second, but it's, it's pretty interesting. Um, being a team player, how many of you do group assignments? How many of your students like it? They hate group assignments, right? But the truth of the matter is they're probably gonna be on a team. They're probably gonna have to share in the work. You know, a lot of people don't come to that naturally. So they, they obviously need to be able to do work individually, but they have to be a good team player. This sort of goes back to, um, I don't want to offend anybody, but I call it the, the jackass factor. And we talk about this in my class all the time. I, I'm like, it doesn't matter how great you are, or how great you think you are. If you're that person, nobody wants you on their team. It's, it, you know, it's that one bad apple spoils the whole thing. The Osmond song or whatever it was, the, that's before your time. Self-starter, being a self-starter kind of goes with being motivated and showing up in the way that you show up. But the other part for me is ambiguity. And one of the things that I have found in my, my teaching career, even with people that I've managed, every class that I have, and 
I'm going to talk about this in the later slides, so I'm just going to talk about it now. Um, I asked my students, I said, how many of you are comfortable with ambiguity? And for the ones who know what ambiguity is, they raise their hand like they're not comfortable with it. And then I said, look, if you don't know what ambiguity is, are you comfortable with the unknown? Or, you know, when things aren't laid out perfectly for you, can you navigate those waters? That's probably the most important thing that I have found in imparting sort of mentorship to my students. Because when they get to a job, most of the time, it's not going to be laid out for them. They're going to say, you know, look, I need, Rebecca, you need to go out and, and sort of figure this out. Nobody's got the, the map for you to go do it. So that's been really important. Intellectually curious. Nobody wants the, the employee drone, you know? They want somebody that's thinking about things in a critical way, that they're intellectually curious. There's another way to think about this, view it from a different perspective, et cetera. The soft skills. Um, and, and, and there's so much written about soft skills, and Dr. Eaton talked about empathy, which I obviously am a big fan, you know, based on the, my thesis, but being able to communicate. So, you know, can our people write? Can our people speak? You know, I always tell my students one of the, one of the most important things that I want them to get out of the class is, you know, first, A class, do you think differently about it than when you walked in? But then two, could you have a conversation about that topic with somebody at a dinner party? If you met, you know, your parents' friends and they said, oh, what are you studying? Well, I'm in marketing. Oh, can you have an intelligent conversation about it? You know, the, the plans and the papers are great. The strategy and the execution that we're imparting to them through all that is excellent. But if they can't articulate it in a way that they're bringing that sort of thing to the job, that's what they're going to be seen on, uh, you know, be graded on a lot is how is this person interacting with the team? How are they contributing to meetings in addition to, you know, what their hard skills are with the work they're doing? And, and lastly, awareness of their selves and others. Um, we, we talk about this all the time and so many people, how do I say this without sounding judgmental? they're not really that self-aware, you know? So the way that you're sitting in the chair at a meeting, the way that you're sitting at the desk in, you know, a class, it matters. And so, you know, I always tell my students, it's like, if you are sitting there just typing away on your computer, when you try that in a meeting at your first job, good luck. And, and how many of you guys let them have their, you know, laptops open during class if you have an in-person class. Yeah, I'm always like, look, you're, you're adults now, but let me just turn the tables. If, if I was here conduct, if you were conducting the class and I'm sitting back there and I'm just doing this the whole time. Now, if you're taking notes, okay, great. But how many of you are really taking notes? That's not well received in, in the business environment. So, um, in, in that whole thing of perception is reality, how you sort of show up, that demeanor, that look on your face, your body language, all of that really matters to people that are managing you or that who own the business. So hard skills are expected and some have a shelf life. Gartner says that, you know, 30% of the skills required three years ago will be obsolete. Soft skills don't have a shelf life. So, you know, what can we do to do more of that into our class. This is um, my son, Ben. I just threw this in last night. You don't need to read that whole thing. So I asked him the question, 80% of the job is just showing up. Do you agree? He says showing up is 50%. That's higher than what you guys said. But I personally believe, you know, from, from jobs that I've had or companies where I've worked, 50% is probably right. I mean, it, I saw things where like people should have been fired way before and they just show up and they're kind of like, you know, but a lot of what I, the point I want to try to make is that a significant portion of the job is not about the hard skills that we're helping them learn. It's about them being able to show up in a way that they're adding value as a person to the culture, to their teammates. And so... You know, those are some of the things that I, that I think about of how can I 
add to my students' experience, I had one guy, I think I was taking, telling Sandra about this. So I just did a digital marketing class online for an MBA program. And this guy just graduated. He was articulate, he was charismatic, he just seemed like he had such potential. Totally clueless. So he, he, tr he went out to be an actor, lived in Hollywood for several years, came back, decided he should get a, a master's degree and kind of take a different you know, track. So I could see him, you know, based on the assignments and the, the class discussions, he's kind of floundering. He's like, you know, he doesn't know what he's going to do. So I had a phone call with him on Saturday, talked to him for an hour and, you know, tried to give him direction. But what really struck me is just, he's now gone through two years of an MBA program and nobody's really talked to him about any of this stuff, seemingly. Now, digital marketing seems to be the area that he's really interested in, and unfortunately, it was the last class that he took. But his education will continue. But he is probably one of, of many that are, you know, just graduating or approaching graduation. They're, they're, they're sort of freaking out about what they're gonna do. They're completely clueless. But I hear from students time and time again of once they get into the job, how much of what they're learning and, and how the job is impacting them and their impact on the job isn't necessarily about doing a marketing plan. You know, how many of our students, I have, I don't know how many students who've been out at least a few years who've never even written a marketing plan, right? Because, you know, that's probably gonna come a little bit later once they're, you know, in their second or third jobs. So what are some of the things that we can help them with while we have them in our care before and when they get to the job. Um, ambiguity, I already mentioned this, but this is a sign that my students gave me, it's on my desk, because I, I hit them with this so many times, I still get emails from them or texts or whatever, and they're like, oh my God, you, you, you have no idea how important this concept was for me to learn, because everything in my life was always so planned out for me, nobody really told me that I might be thrown into a situation where it's not all mapped out for me, and I gotta go find the answers. So when I do assignments, I will purposely leave it sort of ambiguous. I'm kinda like, you know, look, your, your bosses, they don't care how the thing's formatted. I mean, as long as it's formatted professionally, it doesn't matter if it's MLA or APA or whatever, and I know that's probably going against some of the uh, educator stuff, but, um, you know, so trying to keep it loose, trying to give them more, you know, avenue to, to uh, you know, navigate the assignments. Group work and collab collaboration, you're already doing this. This is another thing that I continually see, and I just came off a, a corporate gig where I had some marketing managers, but in group work, and I'm sure you guys can relate, there's always those type A students who wanna sort of just jump in and own it. They're gonna run it, they're gonna do everything, and then there are the other ones that kind of just shirk back a little bit. We need to flip that. We need to, you know, and I've, I've had to say to many of my students, like, look, I know you're the type A who's all, only gotten straight A's and you just want to own this so that you get that A again, but you need to let these people, because that's how, that's how the teams work, you know? They're going to disagree to agree to disagree. They're going to do these things, but it has to be an equitable situation. Different perspectives. Um, I try to always put them in situations where they're thinking about, for instance, if, if it's a marketing class, okay, you work for a marketing agency, you're going to pitch a client, you know, from the same, you know, assignment, have it where you're the client and the agency's going to be pitching you, what are the things that you should be looking for, what are the, you know, the ways that you're going to approach it, and so trying to get them to put on different hats to see different perspectives has been useful for me. We already talked about the soft skills. Communication, back to the chat GPT stuff. Well, what do we need to write for anymore? You know, the computers can just do it all. That's not true. I mean, everything starts with the written word. Really, just about everything. So the more that they can communicate, the more that they can write, the more that they can speak, obviously the better off everybody's going to be, and that's going to pay big dividends for them once they get into the job and they're trying to navigate to move up and progress their career. Um, empathy, I don't know. I mean, personally, I don't know that we can teach empathy. I think 
you know, people can, can do what they can to, to hopefully foster it within themselves and others. But if that's the case, you know, looking at things from your boss's point of view, from the owner's point of view, there's usually, you know, sort of a disconnect with how an employer is looking at things. The one who's writing the checks, when you're the employee, you don't really see it from that perspective. But we need to, you know, we need our students to understand that there are many other points of views that they need to consider the people that they work with, their bosses, their employers, et cetera. Um, lifelong learning, you know, ChatGPT is a perfect example. So much of what we teach them, I don't wanna say is obsolete, but there's so much happening continuously that they have to uh, adopt the, you know, the notion that they're going to have to go learn on their own. Many of my students will ask me, they're like, how do you, how do you know so much? And I'm like, well, one, I'm old, but, but I'm beautiful, but I'm old. Two, I'm a voracious reader. I mean, you have to keep up with everything. And so they have to, they have to uh, embrace that. So their learning is just beginning when they graduate, and I know you know that. Um, I have them look at job descriptions all the time. And if you, if you look at job descriptions now versus several years ago, you're gonna see things like soft skills, communication, empathy even. You're gonna see a lot on analytics. You're gonna start seeing much more on open AI in, in chat GPT. Those are things that they need to be aware of. Um, so many good industry resources. I'm sure, I don't know if any of you use these, but like HubSpot Academy, those certifications, fantastic for resumes, for when they go to interviews, to jobs. Um, all of these have some sort of academy offering where they can take lessons, classes, get certificates. Those are phenomenal. Um, so last but not least, you know, our students need hard and soft skills, and I think we collectively can do a better job helping manage the way that they're getting ready to graduate, the way that they're managing, you know, approaching their first job, and really just sort of looking at, um, you know, their career advancement. The thing I wanted to mention about Ben is, so he got his first big boy job, that sounds condescending, I don't mean it that way. He's an account coordinator at a marketing agency, and there was another account coordinator. And so he was, I, I kind of saw his attitude changing, you know, like it was getting more derogatory, and I said, you know, dude, what is going on? He said, well, there's another account coordinator, and we're lumped together, right? They're the two account coordinators. So I said, trust me, your employers, if you're really doing a great job and she is not, they're going to see that. But he, he kind of got hung up on it. So I said, trust me, the owners, even though you share the same title, you might have similar responsibilities or the same responsibilities, they're gonna see that you're breaking your hump and this person is not, and they're not going to just lump you into the same category. So he texted me yesterday and the girl got fired after a year. And you know, he was sort of indignant that they kept her that long. It, and he wasn't trying to be mean about it. He actually felt really bad for her and he's you know, tried to help, our, help her along and stuff. But I said, that's the thing, the way you show up, how you show up, you know, it makes such a difference. And it doesn't necessarily have to do with your hard skills. It's all about those other intangibles, you know, that are the soft skills. So people and people's skills matter. I hope this was useful. I appreciate your time. Thank you so much.